Local Republicans call him a traitor. The newest member of Guilford County School Board says he's fine with that. It took several months for school board members to seat a Republican, but they did not pick the party's candidate. Tonight we are hearing from that new school board member, including why the fight over his seat may not be finished. Bill O'Neill joins us in Greensboro with the story all new at 6 o'clock. Partisan politics came to Guilford County school elections nearly a decade ago, but never have local school politics been more divisive than they are right now. The board's newest member of Republican Bill Goble is at the center of the partisan battle. Democrats on the school board voted him in after refusing to seat the Republicans candidate, Michael Logan, four different times. Did you I think the Republicans were on board with this? Uh, I thought they would be happy they got a Republican seated. That's what I thought. I thought it was like we're, we're better together than we are separate. Goble was wrong. The Guilford County GOP censored him for party disloyalty just days after the school board voted him in. Goble says his fellow Republicans censored him to cover up their mistake. The fact that they didn't do their work properly. And uh, so they needed something to make scapegoat. Unable to seat their candidate, local Republicans turned to state lawmaker John Hardister for help. Hardister rewrote state law seemingly to allow the party's nominee to fill a vacant seat on the school board. But the effort backfired. Moments before their vote, school board attorney Jill Wilson announced that local Republicans didn't follow the new law. Wilson says the party never updated its nomination to include votes from all executive board members and not just those from so District 3. If you don't vote and the process is wrong, you don't have a valid board member. Using the discovered loophole, the school board voted in Bill Goebel instead of Michael Logan. Goebel tells WXII 12 News he knew the board was going to seat him after a private meeting with school board chair Dina Hayes and the school's attorney. He didn't share that information with fellow Republicans. And why did you keep it secret? They didn't ask me to keep it secret, okay? They didn't, but they didn't tell me not to either. Um, I just was kind of in a state of shock. This is all happening so quick. I mean, it's like within two hours. Goebel says his surprise landing on the school board wasn't by accident. He says he volunteered for the position and spoke with local Republican leaders about it. His effort paid off when the chief of staff to school superintendent Whitney Oakley contacted him. How did the chief of staff for the schools get your name? Through uh, John Hardister. Representative Hardister confirms he passed Goebel's name along to school officials in an effort to broker a deal, but adds the party did not endorse the plan. I, William J. Goebel, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Shortly after taking the oath of office, Republicans lashed out at Goebel, calling him a traitor and a rhino, Republican in name only. I, I have to admit, I am a rhino. Uh, you know, it's Republican in name only? Yeah, because I'm an American first. That's what I am. So if someone wants to accuse me of being a rhino, I'm good with that, because uh, I'll be an American first. Goebel, who says he switched his voter registration from independent to Republican three years ago, claims the party didn't bother to follow its own rules when they censored him. According to the Guilford GOP rulebook, a charge of party disloyalty requires, quote, the person making the charge and the person accused shall have an opportunity to present their positions. Goebel says he was never given a chance to defend himself, but continues to support the Republican Party. We've got to start working together. Uh, we, we don't have the majority in the... Uh, chamber, the council chamber, the commissioners, the school board. Uh, we, you know, if we want to get back in the majority, we got to be working together, not beating up a guy that wants to volunteer. Chris Meadows, who heads the local Republican Party, declined our request for an interview, but tells me the party is considering legal options. Meantime, Representative John Hardister has introduced another bill, again, to prevent the school board from blocking the GOP candidate. That bill passed the House yesterday and now awaits action in the state Senate. In Greensboro, I'm Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News.